All right, the Secret Service updates. A lot of people are speaking out, man. Ex service agents, man, it's getting it's getting real spicy, y'all. But um, hey, I hope everybody is doing well. That y'all have an amazing start to your week. You know, just enjoyed the RNC. You know, we just enjoyed the convention. So it's a lot going on, man. A lot of big news are just hitting the fan. Uh, more wins. You know, cases being dismissed. It's just a lot going on right now. Very, very fast. And, um, you know, still recovering from what took place on July the 13th. Um, a huge part of history. And we're living in the biggest history yet, you guys. Simple as that, man. In some dark, dark times. So just want to just take a couple seconds and just wish you guys the best, man, in your life. In this fast time travel. I want to just send you some love to you and your family. And I'm wishing the, just the best, no matter for what it is, man, that you guys are going through, through this fast time travel that we're living in, man. We got to come together, y'all. One love, baby. One love, man. You know, right now we are divided, man. It's, it's all the hatred, the violence, everything that's been, been spewed out in the media, how they've wiped this poor man through the mud, you know. Former president, man, they've just wiped him through the mud ever since he ran for the for office through the mud, man. You know, all the lies and it's just it's sad, y'all. Garbage on all the nonsense. And you've seen it for yourself, you know. But we have an update. We're gonna jump into this one. It's coming from my brother Benny. Um, and there's a lot of you guys asking me about uh, Doug and in exile. Um, uh, we everything should go back to normal. Uh, and about they said forty eight. Uh, he's on the looking on. It's all on Twitter, you guys. You guys can go check out all the updates on Twitter and X. Um, I know a lot of everybody's been asking me, Rick, what's happening with Doug and X? What's happening? It's all in my comment section. It's it's everywhere, you know. Um, so he's he's in good spirits. Um, he's also posted on on X, but um. Everything should go back to normal. It was something with his account. Not sure, not sure the full details yet because I don't want to just say speak too soon. But um, all the updates are on X and well Twitter. Same thing, you know. Um, and you can just type in uh, Doug Doug to Naple and it comes right up. But um, yeah. So hopefully um, everything will be back to normal and his his uh, channel and everything will be be back up and running. Um, and it, 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 it is, it's crazy, especially around this time and everything that's happening right now. Um, you can only think of the worst and think of censorship and, you know, stuff that, that, that goes on, you know, but, uh, yeah. So let's go and jump into this update and boy, old Dan, Dan snaps live on TV, exposes shocking new Secret Service failure and everybody right now around the world Secret Service failure is trending as a top a whole topic Everybody is talking about the Secret Service right now and there's new footage hidden the fan Every it's like every hour. There's new footage new footage coming in coming out, you know um, Of how they allowed this to happen of a man that's supposed to be the most protected man, you know, a president. And potentially the, the, the next president of the United States, once again. How did you let somebody let off shots a hundred yards away? So it's uh, just not looking good, man. It is not looking good, but we're going to continue to bring you the updates and let you know what's going on. So let's go and jump straight in. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And boy, prayers for Trump and his family, man. Prayers for Trump in the comments. Uh, and prayers to you guys and your family through these dark times that we're living in, man. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny, in our pursuit for truth as to what exactly happened when Donald Trump's ear was blown off, and it could have been his skull or his chest or his neck. Donald Trump is with us today by the grace of God alone, and certainly not because of the competency of the Secret Service. We've been asking a lot of questions like, for instance, 
How does a woman who is two feet shorter than Donald Trump cover him in the incidents of an active shooter? Oh, boy. Why did the snipers who were trained on the actual assassin hold their fire until the assassin had fired seven rounds at the protectee blowing off part of his head? Why did members of the crowd see the assassin crawling towards Donald Trump and the Secret Service did nothing? Why do videos of the assassin alive appear on social media? These are the only it does not it does not look good, y'all. Then they said they were telling people that there's a man crawling. There's it's just it does not look good, y'all. You know? Every everybody and we're all asking for a huge investigation. You know, we need answers. It is not looking good, man. The only videos we actually have of him and that 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 brings us to another question which is why does this man have no social media footprint oh you have a 20 year old who's never been on social media never had a photo of himself posted in anything other than a black rock ad hmm, interesting why was donald trump surrounded by the most incompetent secret service agents in history for instance look at this uh agent try and holster her weapon and she can't do it why was there a pac-man uh secret service uh, bubble around Donald Trump. The Pac-Man Secret Service bubble that just carves out the top of the building. Hmm. Yeah, and there, and then we're going to watch that. I want to watch that video. I've I seen a little bit of it when you guys sent me of this, 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 the, uh, the ex-agent of the, the sniper and how they orchestrate, you know, um, the events, how the Secret Service does it, and how they do like a 360 radius, you know, um, thousand yards out you know, protecting him at events, you know, just stuff like that. I'm just like, wow. How did they allow this to happen, man? Very strange. Why is this 20-year-old uh, not able to have his phone accessed by the best hackers in America, uh, run by the government? Why are snipers from all around the internet, and including snipers that we speak to uh, on, on this channel, saying that none of this makes any damn sense and that Secret Service snipers are the best uh, and they clearly weren't sending their best that day. Why were they getting snipers who couldn't shoot a shot? A decent sniper can easily hit a target 500 yards or more. So why is the Secret Service claiming that a building the shooter used to fire at Trump, which was a little over 100 yards away, wasn't their responsibility? Come on, man. This is bullshit. Get it together and take responsibility, says Dan Bongino. Dan Bongino is somebody that we've been listening to on this account. Now, we really, in times like these, want to tune in to the professionals. So, again, we have reached out to professional snipers who say exactly what Bongino just said. There's a professional sniper of 20 years in military service. I have no effing clue what they are doing. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the building being 150 yards away that was outside the security perimeter. I've trained when competed against Secret Service snipers, and they are the fastest, most accurate snipers in the world. The fact that this happened makes zero sense is what our source told us. What did Dan Bongino say uh, last night? Well, Dan Bongino broke some news on Fox News last night about the catastrophic failures of the Secret Service. And now it looks like a, a, a horrendous cover up by the Secret Service. Uh, who has the president's life in their hand? Let's go. Former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino joins me now. Is this gross incompetence or is it something even more scary that we can't even think about? No, it's gross incompetence. I mean, how do you let, I mean, think about it, right? The counter sniper team, they train out the secret service counter sniper team, obviously they had to mitigate a sniper threat. They train out to a thousand yards. So we're talking about same. Like I just said, a thousand, I was right. A thousand yards. I thought I was wrong for a second. Y'all, a pilot, but a thousand yards. It was man. 200 yards. It was actually yeah. less than that where this, uh, where this guy, uh, shooter was, right? You're talking about a fraction of what they're trained at. They're also trained to spot guys in ghillie suits, cracked open windows. Right. He's on a white roof in broad daylight. Broad daylight. White roof. Now, again, it, it, it'd be... It, it'd be easy for me to say, oh, well, let's not get into Monday morning quarterbacking. Bro, it's not a freaking football game. It's the president of the United States' life. The Secret Service has one job. Well, outside of counterfeiting and protection, it has one job. You keep the body alive no matter what. They, I mean, they, they came within a millimeter of this guy losing his life. I, I don't understand some of the commentary that's, 
you know, oh, the, you know, they did a great job. Well, the the body guys, that response was, I mean, brave. None, you don't, you know, they ran up there. They didn't know there could have been ten more shooters. Right. No doubt. Know those guys. Pretty heroic what happened there. But the security failure in the perimeter is a complete, total debacle. No one should defend this. So when you have guys, we just played the sound, when you have fans saying, hey, there's a guy with a gun over there to multiple law enforcement guys, and they still are just looking around like this and no one... How does that happen? Well, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm getting from a number of sources that people are feeding to me their information, obviously, because they want to fix it. They're concerned, and I think you're going to see a lot of whistleblowers. I'm hearing there were very, very few. I don't want to give an exact number, but very few actual, I don't think anyone else has reported this, actual Secret Service post standers at that site. That they were temp HSI, right. uh, Homeland Security folks, which are, they're great folks. I'm not knocking them, but that's not what they do specifically. We do protection and we're trained for that. So I'm hearing that. I'm also hearing that the counter, uh, the counter sniper team, that they had a problem seeing over the elevation. That's why I didn't engage right away. Oh, come on. But, but that's not the problem. The problem, well, it's the problem, but that's not the real, the problem is, where the hell was the aerial visual support? Why was there no helicopter? Why was there no drone? Why was there no FLIR? Why was there no thermal? Forward-looking infrared. How the hell is the crowd acting as the freaking counter-surveillance operation? I know. If that's the best asset you have is random Trump supporters telling police that there's a guy with a gun, what technology are they deploying? They're bragging about they have all this new technology. I didn't see it. Um, tell me about when they rush him over to the to the van, I guess, the vehicle. It seemed like some of the Secret Service agents, I just don't know if they had the stature that I would expect to see uh, and, the, and the gravitas that I would expect to see protecting the former president. Well, the rule is maximum to the protectee, minimum to the problem, right? Because you don't know how many problems there are. So if you try to rush, rush to one problem, like the Malcolm X shooting, and there's another problem over there, you're going to wind up getting dead quick. So they did the right thing by rushing to the protectee. On the evac out, yeah, you do see a couple of uh, agents who one couldn't reholster the weapon and things like this. So, um, yeah, there were some definitely. And the other one was like five foot four. Yeah, I mean, you're going to find out in the coming weeks that the, the physical fitness standards for men and women are different. That's weird because the protectee's <laughs> weight and height doesn't change for a man or a woman. Does Cheadle get fired Anytime she, soon. She needs to go immediately. She has disgraced the Secret Service multiple times. She needs to go. She needs to be fired ASAP, but Mayorkas doesn't have the cojones to do it. Biden should do it. Leapfrog Mayorkas and terminate her. Zero, zero chance. She's got to go. Chance. Well, he never fired he anybody even over anything. Is cracking open Pepsis. Cracking open Pepsis. Service director is there's zero chance like he, he fires her. No way. All right, Dan Bongino, thanks so much for coming on Jesse Waters Prime Time. Keep talking to your sources. Yeah, All right. Whew. It's important to listen to guys like Dan in these moments. Uh, his his takes are incredibly clarifying, and it seems like this is going to be a scandal that grows and builds as we have just heard. Uh, seconds ago, that the head of the Secret Service, Kim Cheetel, is her name. She was recently uh, guarding Cheetos at Pepsi company. Why, why, did, why did you hire somebody who worked at Pepsi to be the head of the Secret Service? Oh, because oh. Jill Biden pushed for it. Cracking open Pepsi. Sources say. Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle landed her job because Jill Biden's office pushed for it. This is Miss DEI uh, hiring agents, you know, like this, to protect Donald Trump, who's two feet taller than her. Donald Trump saying today that he's supposed to be dead. Surreal assassination attempt. I should have died, says President Trump. There needs to be massive reforms inside of the Secret Service. Dan Bongino has said this before. Dan Bongino, it, just a blistering take on the Secret Service's performance uh, in a previous Fox News interview. Listen to this. And I got to tell you, the Secret Service should be very careful. I can tell you and absolutely confirm from the horse's mouth, from multiple people, not just one. And I saw Congressman Waltz text this out before on X. There have been repeated requests to increase the security footprint around not just the residences of Donald Trump, but the body itself. And they have been rebuffed. Like I said, I can tell you actual quotes. The Secret Service directors completely failed and candidly should resign today. Kim Cheadle has failed Donald Trump and honestly failed Joe Biden, too. He's the president right now. Where's the DHS secretary? I mean, this is you're blaming it on manpower. So just to be clear. We're a four trillion dollar United States government and we can't fork over enough money to keep our people alive. 
And, and then you were sending out tweets like, oh, this is the best technology we have. Really? To let a sniper 150 yards away from the potential next president shoot a piece of his ear off? Pfft, that's your victory lap? Give me a break, man. Somebody who would have oversight of the Secret Service and their failures, a member of Congress. There happens to be a member of Congress named Corey Mills, who's a friend of the program, and who also uh, was a sniper in the military. And he had probably the most devastating take of anybody. And this guy's going to be the one asking questions of the Secret Service director, Kim Cheadle, in Congress. We look forward to that. Mm. Let's go. Let's bring in Florida Congressman and former U.S. Army sniper, Corey Mills. What kind of shot was this, Corey, from 130 yards? Look, at the end of the day, this is a shot that your basic training boot camp soldier is requested to make within their nine-week period. This is one of the easiest shots, and they train all the way out mm. till 300 or 500. And when I was doing the counter-sniper, it wasn't with the United States Army. It was actually when I was with the State Department and was doing this exact thing, which is trying to look at going out with an advanced team, establishing what the perimeter is, and then as a sniper, when you would set up, you'd put together your range sketch or your range fan cards. Yeah, and that and was y'all know we have snipers on the channel. I want that to be known. We got some high qualified uh, uh, people on the channel, man. And a lot of y'all that have reached out and sent me these exact same clips and expressed a lot of stuff that I can't mention that, I've, I, that, that I get in my emails. Yeah, man, it's real. Tell you where your 100, your 200, your 300, and you'd identify the areas of threat that you would be able to mitigate. And if there's multiple targets, you understand that your elevation and windage knob wouldn't have to be messed with, especially at 160 yards. You could literally just look quickly, glance, and know from the reference point whether it be a building, whether it be a lone tree, whether it be a parking lot, maybe it's a road. Bottom line is, is that this is massive negligence to the point of me speculating on what was intentional and what wasn't. Wow. When you're doing a site survey and you're seeing this rooftop not that far away, why did it look like the counter sniper team was a little surprised? You know, I can only speculate, and we'll have to wait until the investigation comes out, that they thought local law enforcement was potentially climbing up onto the roof when they saw a dark object on a light roof. But here's the issue. Wait, wait, wait. Minute- you're saying maybe they misconstrued crooks? For a friendly, for local law enforcement? It's very possible. I don't want to speculate until the investigation is over. But the bottom line is is that if you saw someone climbing onto a roof that you hadn't authorized any clearance on, it's got a clear line of sight. It's exactly adjacent to the shooting where the president was sitting. And you're talking about a pop shot and you've got people yelling and there should have been comms. The minute that that local law enforcement who apparently had a rifle pointed on, there should have been an emergency frequent comms channel that they could have said, we have a shooter on the roof, shooter on the roof. Secret Service should have rushed the stage and immediately took the president and took him off and then responded with the counter sniper. The shot should not have gone off. That is the failure in itself. You're supposed yeah. to be able to try and, you know, the best security is when you go in and you're actually able to prevent an incident, not react to an incident. Even if you would have left a law enforcement officer's patrol car in that parking lot with the lights on, that could have been a deterrent. But when you have nothing that is actually showing force protection, you're encouraging this. Look, I'm not sure about who the individuals are on the individual detail secret service, but I can tell you under this Biden administration, the one thing I've seen is massive DEI hires. And I can tell you, when you primary, when you didn't earn it, didn't earn it. Primarily go after DEI, you end up with DIE. So when you have these counter snipers waiting until eight rounds are fired, what accounts for that? To be honest After with you, the first shot, you get a return fire immediately? The minute that a shot rang out, they should have already been on scope. Your spotter should have already have called the distance if you hadn't looked at your range card, and you should have immediately engaged. Okay. There should have been no reason to have waited a single second. Now, I talked to Eric Trump after the incident. Eric and I are both gun enthusiasts. We both shoot long distance. That right there is a pop shot. But he did say, I've gone out with the CS teams, and they are one of the best. I've, he knows the actual the service detail that's with them. They are loyal individuals who actually do care about the president. I can say that was that was relayed to me. But the bottom line is, is this is a massive security breach. This is a huge failure at huge negligence failure. is at best. Huge but failure. we have to figure out why something within 200 yards. Think about this, Jesse, 200 yards. That means that an average rifle 
that holds one minute of angle would hold a two inch grouping if you just shot it straight off the deck, meaning on, the, on a platform. So now you're talking about 160, which is 1.6 inches is what its grouping capabilities are. The average head is what? Six by eight, shoulder to shoulder is 20 inches, head to waist is 40 inches, and President Trump's a very large man. This is a shot that within five minutes I could teach you to make nine out of ten times. Mm. So this is divine intervention. Mm. This is the, the God having his protective hand and wearing Ephesians 6, the armor of God over the president, because this is right here, a millisecond or a millimeter in change, and this isn't an attempted assassination. This is an assassination of a president. Yeah. Uh, the devil wow. was in Butler, Pennsylvania, but so was God. Well, and I can see. Amen. Amen. Y'all put prayers for Trumps in the comment, man. Prayers for Trump in the comments, man. I told you. God works in mysterious ways, man. Amen. Say one more thing, if I may, which is that let us also remember that King Henry II went in and said, can no one rid me of this turbulent priest? And his, king, his knights went out and killed the Archbishop of Canterbury because they thought that was a direct order. What do you say when President Biden says, we should, it's time to put a target on Trump? That, in my opinion, is the insightful rhetoric. That's the stuff that they would have went after for the J6 stuff. So why don't we have our own J13 investigation? Yeah, there needs to be a full investigation on this. Absolutely. And it needs to not be crooked like some of these other former investigations were. That's right. Politicians. Mills, you're the best. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes, indeed, man. A huge failure. There needs to be a huge investigation. But hey, I love y'all. God bless all you and your family. Wishing you all the best, man, through these dark, crazy times that we're living in. We're living in the biggest history yet. We're still on the road to a huge victory. Um, and it will most definitely be a landslide. But hey, I love y'all. And I will catch you beautiful people in the next one, man. Peace and love, y'all.